Welcome back to the story of liberty. This is John Bona. There's the continued fight of the U.S. government attempting to take private property. Why does the federal government own about 65% of all the land west of Denver? Does anybody care? The federal government was not created to be the owner of all this land. In fact, this was the basic founding of our nation. The Declaration of Independence in 1776 prevented this type of control. We see clearly in the 10th Amendment to our Constitution that the power is not delegated to the United States by the Constitution, nor prohibited by it to the states, are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Why does the federal government own all this land then? It owns almost all the land in Alaska, about 98%. It owns about 85% of the land in Nevada, where we see the current battle between an innocent farm owner who's been there with his family for generations and generations. Mr. Bundy, he has been battling the federal officials over his cattle that had been grazing on this land for decades and decades. But the federal government, the Bureau of Land Management, is imposing huge grazing fees upon him, arbitrarily. A federal court ruled against the 68-year-old veteran rancher, but he refused to remove his cattle. But Mr. Bundy is protecting his property. Environmentalists say it's time for Bundy to remove his cattle off the land because they're endangering the habitat of creatures that have been there forever. The wacko environmentalists are saying that the tortoise, the turtle, needs the area for food and the plants need to recover from the cattle and the wildfires. These wacko environmentalists, the nonprofit center for biological diversity, whatever that is, say Mr. Bundy must stop his livelihood and remove the cattle. But Mr. Bundy says a resounding no, the cattle will stay. And Americans agree with him. Because the facts are, there are literally tens of millions of species on the planet. The range is somewhere between a million six in that range to over 70 million. Nobody really knows how many when you include insects and bacteria and viruses. Oh, did you know that a virus and a fungi is considered a species? But the truth is from the time of the pilgrims landing in the early 1600s, there have only been documented about 1,000 extinctions out of these millions and millions of species. There is no significant problem. These alarmists are claiming no legitimate base. They have no statistical reality to make these accusations. There's no need for a current panic to save for example, the Delta smelt, as they did in California, to cut off water that would benefit all the California farmers, all the workers that ended up unemployed, and the millions of people who eat the food and prosper from the beautiful San Joaquin Valley. No, but the radical environmentalists think that the Delta smelt is more important than people. That, my friends, is insanity. Christ said something about 
the fact that human beings, that people had much greater value than animals, or for that matter, some virus or some bacteria or fungi for that matter. But the Bundy family vowed to protect their land as they have the legal right to do so. They have a right to protect their land. And they've been there for over a hundred years. The grandfathers were there. And they're not giving it up. Just take a look at the bogus Earth's Endangered Creatures list. It goes on and on and lists names that you can never even pronounce. Hundreds and hundreds of them. And, and see, the radical environmentalists are using these lists to take private property away from families. Folks, there is no valid reason why our federal government should own and take this land. This property belongs to the people. But these radical environmentalist groups have gotten the government power behind them to literally take away private property. Let's remember that that's the whole goal of socialism, to take away private property. And see, that's what the environmentalists, maybe they don't even know what they're doing. Let me say something real clear to the environmentalists. You are creating a socialistic state. It's really a form of communism because you're using these lists of endangered species to take away private property and use the federal government, the long-reaching arm of the federal government, the tentacles of the federal government, to take away a family's land. And that, my friends, is the foundation of socialism. The idea that government should own all the sources of production and distribution that it should benefit from, not private families and people. But the way our Constitution is written, just read the Tenth Amendment, the states and the people who live in those states should decide how that land is used and how the resources are used. Not some radical environmentalist saying there's a turtle on the land that could be damaged so nobody could go there, no cattle could graze there. It's taken away from the people from we, the people. But now, today, the federal government not only dictates how the land will be used, it dictates the law that will be enforced. Plain and simple, the federal government should not own land other than what was authorized in our Constitution. It should not be demanding and forcing and using its federal agents with stun guns dictating how land is used in any state. And it should not be enforcing it with literal force upon families without the authority of the local sheriff, the local officials, the governor of that state. The tension has grown. And now the federal government of the United States is interfering with private land ownership again. It's time for the people, we the people, to organize and to get the federal government out of the real estate business. But the truth is, the documented number of extinctions compared to the number of species is so minuscule, so small, it's insignificant. And the irony is that there's less than a 1% success rate. And this worldwide endangered species list of animals and bacteria and fungi and what else you have, viruses, well, they only have less than a 1% success rate for the so-called Endangered Species Act. Well, 
There needs to be serious reform in the methods our government is using to interfere against private property. See, the taking of land, this land that has tremendous natural resources, oil, gas, and other great resources, the government is taking this land not because of a turtle or a virus or bacteria species. It's taking the land because the land has great resources. You see, the government uses the crony environmentalists to achieve their ends. And the environmentalists are using the government to enforce their ridiculous ideas. In light of these facts, we know that our federal government needs to adopt new policies to protect private property, not interfere and grasp and regulate or control private property. Thank you for joining us at the Story of Liberty.